Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the seventh episode in this Seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His biography. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna sayyidana Muhammadar Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa sharafa wa qarra wa barak wa adham wa sahabati wa tabi'in wa tabi'at tabi'in bi ihsan ila yawm ad-din wa alayna ma'hum fi kulli lamhatin wa nafsin adad ma yasimullah amma ba'd. In the session of uh, number 7 we will be looking at Khadija radiyallahu anha that woman that was chosen from amongst all the women ever created or to be created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and then we'll be looking at their marriage Khadija radiyallahu anha her full name was Khadija bint Khuwailid ibn Asad so her father's name was Khuwailid who was the son of Asad so she was one of the wealthiest women amongst the Quraysh she was also of noble lineage and she was a woman to be at that time a wealthy woman was a major thing and this shows her distinguished thought her strong personality her upright behavior and conduct and etiquettes that she was that perfect match for the Prophet so Khadija bin Khwailid she as I said is a billionaire and she had an upbringing of uh, a very good upbringing. Her cousin was Waraka bin Nofal, so him being a learned man who knew about the Torah, who knew about the Injil, the previous scriptures, she would grow up knowing and hearing from him, such like whoever would, uh, whoever marries that person who, whom the clouds shade, they will be successful in this life and in the hereafter. So this is now something she grew up with, knowing, learning about, knowing that this was the time when a Prophet, the last Prophet by Allah chosen, would be coming, that Advent would be soon. So she knew and she had a good upbringing in that sense and she was highly intellectual as well. And she was a very successful businesswoman. So she was looking for a uh, business partner because although she, she was a woman, she needed that man to be undertaking her uh, her business dealings, her transactions and um, carrying out that trade amongst in the markets. So she needed that business partner. And it, the word had spread around about Al-Amin, the Prophet Wasallam. And so she sent Maysara, her slave, to approach the Prophet Wasallam with a proposal about uh, becoming a business partner and taking her goods to Sham, the Levant area, the uh, area which is now Sh um, Syria, Jordan, Palestine, all the that holy lands. So Mesar approached the Prophet ﷺ, he agreed and they were on their journey and this was now to be the second journey of the Prophet ﷺ outside of Mecca. We saw the first one was with that episode with Bahira, the monk of the Jewish uh, teachings. Now, on this journey, they went past this tree and the Prophet ﷺ, he sat under this tree. It was an olive tree and olive trees grow up to be 3,000 years. So it was there since the time of Isa Islam. And there was a monk who lived in this vicinity by the name of Nastur, uh, of the Christian faith now. Not like Bahir, it was more of the Jewish uh, uh, books and knowledgeable about that. So this was now in the Christian traditions, new about that more. And Nastur, he knew that Isa al -Islam mentioned that whoever is under this tree is going to be a prophet. He would there sitting, watching, seeing if anybody, observing, anybody sitting under that tree, but it never happened to pass. People would just pass by that tree and not even pay attention to it throughout the time, throughout the ages. But on this occasion, it was the Prophet Wasallam who came and sat under the tree. And Maysara, who was sent by Khadija as well to assist the Prophet Wasallam. He was in so much awe of the Prophet that everybody thought that Maysara was the slave of Prophet how he was so submissive and so loyal to the Prophet 
such was the nature of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that that's what they thought. So Ubay Sada was more or less the ears and the eyes of Khadija Radha as he would report back about how this new business partner is doing as well. So he was a trusted slave of Khadija who would undertake that business duties as well. So Ubay noted that Nastur, this Christian monk, suddenly ran to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He looked on his back for that seal of prophethood, kissed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he testified that you are indeed to be the final prophet, the final messenger sent by Allah to mankind. So he noticed all these things. Furthermore, then they went in the market, and then throughout all this, you know, the clouds are shading the Prophet. So this was something else to notice by Maysara. So in the market, a Jewish trader and the Prophet they get into some disagreement about the price. The Jewish trader says to the Prophet, swear by Latin Uzza, those idols kept in the Kaaba that the um, Mushrikeen. The idolaters worship. Prophet Sam refused to do so. Found that repulsive, and this was this was something different. And even the Jewish trader noticed that that normally because he knew that the Prophet Sam was from the Qurayshi, who was Qurayshi, who was from the Quraysh clan. He knew that all the other traders would swear by Latin Uzza. So this was someone different. And the Prophet Sam made profit from this Jewish trader from all the other traders that he traded with because the Prophet Sam was honest. He was truthful. Al Amin. He was someone you can trust. And he spoke the truth and honest, an honest merchant. And this was now you can see the benefit of that. And it's a lesson for us in our lives to be such of the character of the Prophet. So he brought in so much prophets, never seen before by Maysara nor Khadija, which she would find out later on when they would return. So then it was their return back after all the goods had been uh, traded and a great profit was made by them. Blessings of the Prophet Sallallahu and Khadija Radhiana, she was already on a balcony looking at Maisara and the Prophet Sallam departing for Sham and she noticed that cloud above the Prophet. Sallam. So when they returned she was again on the balcony, seeing and waiting and observing patiently whether that cloud would come again and is this the same person it was gonna be on? Um, is this the same person who went is coming back and was to be? And she had already made up her mind before she knew what the result of her what was the result of the dealings and whether she made a profit or loss, she already made her mind that she would make, give double to the Prophet such that she she just loved his uh, honesty and the trustworthiness and she had made up that mind and she saw that cloud, she knew she, he was such a special person. So she was one of the women of distinguished thought and this is a encouragement for women to be of distinguished thought, not to be like the other women, men as well, to be of distinguished thought, to be more to the Prophet and how he was with thought and the thinking process and how to adopt that sunnah in our lives and how to, to be that closeness to the Prophet So Khadija she was such a woman, a fine woman of such morals and etiquettes, of a strong personality and uh, such excellent suluk and conduct with others. So she had made up her mind to give double to the Prophet and she was the one who then, when she came and found out about the profit, profits of her business as well, she sent Munayya, uh, Nafisa bin Munayya, with Maysa to the Prophet Sallallahu and this was to uh, send a proposal of marriage, but to first investigate why the Prophet Sallallahu did not marry in the first place. So they asked the, the Prophet Sallallahu and he said that I, I do not have wealth to marry. Um, and it hasn't crossed my mind about marrying somebody because of that. So they said, shall we show you a person or shall we show you a person who can bring you wealth and success? And he asked, who is this person? And they said, marry Khadija. And he said, oh, where is she? Where am I? He knew she was a billionaire as well. But it so happened to be that Khadija, she really wanted to marry the Prophet and she wanted to be the first to marry the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to, to first to get get um, that uh, deal done, she would say. And as such, the proposal went. He took the proposal back to Abu Talib, the guardian of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Abu Talib agreed, the Prophet Sallallahu agreed. And then the Prophet, uh, um, Abu Talib gave a speech. And in this speech, he mentioned about this, this khutbah speech, this, this this nikah sermon and he said about the Prophet about the lineage 
their lineage was able of the most noble um, had the most noble of lineages back to Ibrahim Islam mentioned that Ismail in Islam and all the other um, tribes that they belonged to and their forefathers the Abu Talib mentioned about the Prophet Sallam he was if you scale him to other men he surpasses them all by miles and that in nobility in honor in intellect he further on went to say about wealth because the Prophet did not have much wealth that there's a lot of barakah that comes wealth he said is like a shadow that move, uh, that uh, goes away and that wealth is also a matter that changes you have profits you have loss it's, it's, it's always a changing matter when day you're rich when day you're poor so it's like that but this person after all this this man is somebody special knowing the the dreams of his grandfather about the Prophet knowing the dreams of her um, the Prophet mother knowing his um, own view uh, what observances about how the Prophet brought Barakah because Abu Talib was also a person of not much wealth so he mentioned about this, this person my uh, the son of my brother Abdullah which was the Prophet my nephew he has great news he has a great thing in, about him so this is what he mentioned in the, that sermon and then he offered that dowry to the marriage dowry to Khadija Radhanha, which was to be 12.5 silver uqiyah of silver and uh, on top of that 24 uh, finest camels as marriage dowry the 12.5 uqiyah is one uqiyah is about 40 dirhams so you're talking about um, over uh, 400 dirhams plus 24 camels so this was going to be the dowry of the Prophet to Khadija carrying on further Khadija when she, she was married to the Prophet nobody else was married to the Prophet she was the one who gave him children who carried on to live uh, he had children like, such as Ibrahim uh, Ibrahim uh, through Maria Qibtiya but he died in infancy. The children of uh, the Prophet and Khadija Radana, they lived. Not all of them. The first was Qasim. The first was the son. The last was the son. Qasim and Abdullah. And between that, four girls. Zainab, Ruqayya, Um Kulthum, and Fatima. Fatima Radana was born when the Prophet was 35. We're now 25 of the Prophet being married. She was born at 35 years old. And when the Prophet was 40, that's when he had uh, Abdullah, also known as Tahir and Tayyib, uh, as other names given to uh, Abdullah. So only the four girls survived of the Prophet and she was the one who was that greatest support of the Prophet first support, who kept his heart firm, after which was Abu Talib, that second strong support of the Prophet on this journey, of this journey that we're talking about, this seerah that we're going to be speaking about that he had to undertake to become the final prophet, the final messenger to, to bring to us that important message about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about Tawheed, about the oneness of Allah and to worship him. So we end here and from here we'll continue inshallah in episode 8 where we'll be looking at that that um, that matter that all of the Arabs know about the building of the Kaaba. Nashadu Allah ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayh.